Recovery Lifestyles with Carmel. Inside the lives of women and men who have gained freedom and overcome, going on to live healthy, meaningful lives. Let's raise awareness together and end stigmas surrounding recovery, addiction, mental health, eating disorders, abusive relationships. These are stories of those who have recovered and are now living lives that are inspiring and on purpose. I'm here with Kat Gandini today, and Kat is an Australian mental health advocate with six years of sobriety and a track record for surviving debilitating anxiety, depression, PTSD, eating disorders, and chronic fatigue syndrome. She is well-versed in speaking a range of topics. She believes in the power of owning and sharing our stories, both to facilitate healing and connect with and help others. Kat has embraced her creativity through art, writing, drawing on her education and readings in art history, English literature, philosophy, and intersectional feminism. So Kat, thank you so much for being here today. And would you like to share a little bit about your experience that led you into recovery? Right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so my story is that my drinking was never really normal. It was always used to numb pain, to escape life. Uh, it was always just me hitting that exit button. And you know, a lot of people talk about they had normal drinking until they crossed some kind of line or something happened in their life and then they started abusing alcohol more. But for me, just uh, basically the minute I tasted it, it became a problem for me. And, um, you know, I knew very early on that it was a problem that I was going to have to address at some point. But it was just, um, I wasn't ready until I was ready, really. So I got sober when I was 24. And um, that is, feels like when my life really started living, actually. Mm. And can you share with us that turning point, what it felt like to start living? It was like choice is the word that comes to mind. It was finally I had a choice in my life. It felt like before that I was constantly dog paddling, trying to keep my head above water. And I had so many good intentions so often. You know, inside I was still a good person and I wanted so much for my life and I wanted so badly to change and I tried so many times to change. But I truly believed at that time, up until I was 24 when I got sober, it felt like change wasn't possible. I, you know, I really had it in my brain that I couldn't change because I tried so many times, nothing happened. Um, and yeah, eventually when I did get sober, that was the turning point for everything to change. You know, that was when I started to take responsibility for my life and really properly get help for my mental illness and look at my past, look at my behavior. Um, and I think that that choice to take responsibility and that choice to change, that all facilitated, you know, the rest of my life, how it's turned out since then. Yeah, yeah. No, I really hear what you're saying, how um, starting to, learning to look at ourselves, learning to look at maybe our own behaviors, and then having choices, because I feel that the common thread between a lot of us who have um, struggled in addiction and with mental illness is that we feel like victims, you know? Absolutely. And that really takes um, all of our choices away from us. So... When you entered a recovery, I know you and I had touched on it a little bit before, but you were so young. I mean, 24 is really young. I mean, <laughs> that must have felt maybe a little bit lonely because all of your friends are still out partying and having fun. And all of a sudden, now what? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's so strange though, because at the time, I didn't see myself as young. At the time, I thought, gosh, you know, you should have everything together. You know, your friends are starting to move on. Even though my friends all binge drank a lot and, you know, have their own relationship with alcohol, um, 
I was really hard on myself and really like, gosh, get it together already. You know, you should have quit drinking years ago. And now I look back and think 24 was so young. You know, I was still very young. Um, and it was incredibly isolating. And it was, it was so difficult to try to explain to people. I was, you know, I would over explain myself if I went out and my friends were like, oh, why aren't you drinking? You know, I have to give this huge answer instead of just saying, no, I'm not drinking. Just respect that boundary. You know, I felt compelled to pull my guts out and say, oh, it's so bad. You know, I had to, you know, try to explain to them every, uh, every little bit of it to uh, get them to support me. But, Honestly, there wasn't much support when I first got sober. Um, no one understood. It was very isolating. And I didn't know anyone who had got sober before. And I certainly, even when I did get into recovery communities, there weren't that many young people about. So it was very difficult uh, trying to balance that, you know? Like, I, I felt like uh, when I first got sober, I turned suddenly into, like, an 80-year-old maid, you know? Like, it was... It's been a balance for me to want to reclaim, you know, I can still be young and fun love. What, what was it that really helped you at that time? Because it is isolating. It is lonely mm. when, you're, when you're that young and you just um, don't have that support system yet. So mm, A couple of things that really helped. There were a couple of books I read in early sobriety that, you know, I just held on to like a lifeline but also being online and finding an online sober community really did help as well. And, um, you know, I used to have like a Pinterest board of like uh, celebrities who were sober, you know, and I could be like, they're doing it. And some of them had got sober young as well. And I'd be like, you know, they did it. I can do it too kind of thing. Um, there are, yeah. There are groups, you know, around my area that are for young people getting together and being sober. But, you know, it's, it is tricky in the sober community as well because there can be kind of a division of, you know, people who are so hardcore that their entire personality becomes about their recovery. And it can be hard in that aspect as well. And I think when you're young, when you're in your mid-20s, you're still getting to know who you are. So your personality is very in flux. And getting sober is such a huge thing. And it's such a, you know, doorway to getting to know who you are. But in sobriety, for me, in the first few years, I made my whole personality about my recovery kind of thing. Um, and growing up, getting to know who I am and being around other young people, it, it's trying to find the right mix of who you are because I used to just be so black and white thinking. I would think I had to be all one thing. So when I was the drinking girl, I was the party girl. That's who I was. That was like my entire identity. And then I got sober and I wanted to be this like purer than life, perfect. You know, I wanted to just erase the past basically and go in the complete other direction and be like, now I'm Miss Pure kind of thing, you know? <laughs> Um, and you know, that's what I meant when I said, like, I tried to kind of jump to being like a, a 40 year old or something. Like I wanted to just skip all that messy bit in between and just get to the afterwards. And you can't do that. You have to, um, you have to put all the pieces together and work out, you know what? I am still have a little bit of this cheeky party girl personality and that's okay. Like that's okay to keep that. And I don't need to drink to have that, but I can still you know, have that little piece of me that was still that girl. And then I can also have this piece of me that, you know, that wants to do yoga and wants to be pure and wants to be connected, you know, with my spirituality, with my higher power. Um, I can be the part of me that, you know, is an achiever. I can have all these different assets of me. I can be the granny who just wants to stay home, drink tea, read books. You know, I can also be the science fiction nerd. I can be everything. And, um, I think that was really important for me being young in recovery as well.
just learning to put those pieces together and um you know, I guess you, you learn as well from the other people around you. You see how they act and you like, I like that or I don't like that. And you can, um, yeah, begin to Make, change yourself. Mm. It sounds like making those choices again for yourself. So what has recovery brought to your life that you didn't have before? Is there anything in particular? Peace. <laughs> Peace, absolutely. Um, my life before was so chaotic, so chaotic for myself and for anyone in my life, for my family, for my friends, for my partners. I would just, I feel like I just dragged a lot of people down into my chaos as well. And yeah, it is, it's just so much more peace of being sober and that did not come immediately. I'm going to say that my first year of recovery was not peaceful. It was incredibly difficult and probably even more dramatic than the drinking period before it, or maybe equally as chaotic, but it was just so emotionally turbulent. It was very difficult. Um, but with it, you know, came just wonderful moments that you're like, oh, I haven't lost my car keys in a month. Oh, you know, I haven't had to apologize to all my friends or I haven't had a huge breakdown because I said something so dumb to this person and it turned into this whole drama. And um, there's the outside chaos, like the action that your drinking behavior causes all these crises in your life. Then there's the inside chaos, you know, where you can't sit still with yourself. You can't accept yourself or love yourself. You know, you're trying to fill some pain and it is just chaos inside your heart as well. So getting sober has just, just quietened, you know, that absolutely. And I'm so, you know, at first I remember when I was sober, thinking I wanted to go out and make some drama because it was so boring. I was like, gosh, it's so boring now. Like I need to just go stir up some trouble or something and I'd have to really repress that urge. But, you know, that's what I was used to. I was used to chaos. I was used to living in trouble and jumping from one drama to another. And that, you know, kept my mind off my inner pain. It was, you know, another addiction really to drama. So getting used to the peace, you know, there are no huge dramas in my life anymore. I manage the things that come up. Um, it's so, it's a much better way to live for me. I'm, I'm so grateful I got sober. Best thing I did. <laughs> uh, no, it, it sounds like it. So is there something that you would like to relate? If there's somebody listening to this show right now that is really struggling with the idea of addiction or coming in and out and, well, what would you what would you tell them? What would you want to share with them? Um, for me, it didn't happen straight away. I was trying, you know, on and off to get sober for a, probably a couple of years before I actually did get sober. Um, once I had truly made the decision, I'm pretty lucky in that it did stick for me. Um, but it it can be difficult, and I think it's really important to try to be kind to yourself and accept where you are in the journey. I think with recovery, even in recovery communities, I feel like there's quite a bit of harshness and quite a bit of judgment, um, especially around working a certain program to be sober or around, you know, people having relapses. Um, and you know, I hear a lot, oh, they weren't, they weren't doing enough to stay sober and that's the reason they drank again or they must not have been strong enough or they must not have hit rock bottom yet or like a lot of this kind of blaming on the individual, which I don't think is going to help them. I've known a number of friends who that really um, precipitated another relapse for them you know, having that shame and blame and judgment on them for not being properly sober or, or some way like this. I think if we were all a little bit more open-minded and a bit more compassion 
um, it would in just in general help the addiction epidemic because you know no one wants to be living like this and that's the thing I think people don't understand it's like we didn't choose to become like this we didn't go yeah we're gonna become an addict or an alcoholic you know ruin our life we didn't want that and it is possible to change so I think yeah if you're struggling with it just please hang in there keep trying keep trying um yeah I wish you all the best I'll be thinking of you I know how hard it is <laughs> so um and are you part of a 12-step program is that where you got sober Yes, I um I actually did my first year of sobriety by myself and that was very, very, very difficult. Mm. I wouldn't particularly recommend it doing it all by yourself. Um when I went into a twelve step program, I was almost a year sober already. Um, but life got a lot easier once I was in that community and I had people to relate to and, you know, I had somewhere to go when things were getting really tough in my head or in my life, you know, I could go to meetings, I could talk to people. So that did really help me. Um, I would just suggest, um, yeah, finding the right people for you inside those groups. Um, and yeah. It's, it's a we program, right? That's what I hear. Yes. That program. It's a we program, not yes. alone, because when we're isolating ourselves, and which is very natural and which is very easy for addicts, is, it, and anyone dealing with mental health issues is to want to just isolate because it feels safer, but really it's not. Um, and it can be a real struggle. Was it hard for you in the beginning or even now to participate in these groups and to not isolate? Yes, I, <laughs> I'm definitely one of those people who, you know, wants to be part of the group when things are going well and when things are not going well, you know, that's when I want to isolate because that shame comes in and I don't want to share, you know, that things are really hard. <laughs> so sometimes that can creep in. I think it is important though that we share when things are hard so that we know it's normal for things to be hard and we can see people get through those times, you know, we can see them being resilient that, oh, that person was really struggling, but you know what, they stayed sober and look, they're back again now and life has changed again for them and things are better now. So Kat, thank you so much for being here today. Everything that you're talking about, I know that will be touched by someone who is listening that needed to hear it. And if anyone would like to connect with you or see your art or read any of your writing, where could they find you? Yes, yeah, so I have a blog called katgandini.com and I'm also on Instagram quite a bit and again Kat Gandini on there. The other social medias are the same, Kat Gandini. So yeah, if anyone wants to come hang out and have a chat with me where you'll find me. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on today. And for joining us on Recovery Lifestyles podcast, where we are committed to raising awareness and ending stigmas surrounding addiction and mental health.